What's going on? Welcome back to Trending Stocks. Today, I want to give you an overview of what happened with SoFi, go over some of the data points, what came out from the company itself, and go over everything else that you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And with that, let's get right to it. So SoFi did go down 2.26%. So there was a lot of fear in the market first thing, and especially during the power hour, there was a lot of last minute jitters going into tomorrow. But regardless, SoFi did recover fairly nicely. And a lot of institutions were getting into SoFi. So buying the dip essentially as far as volume 50.48 million shares were traded 54.9 is the average these are some of the transactions that did occur on the secondary market above one hundred thousand dollars so based on the bid the ask and the selling price majority of the transactions were buys and you do see some pretty big ones so 5.5 million 11.4 first thing 1.85 and even after hours yesterday 7.36 aside from that though dark pool is very popular today so you do see a lot of transactions right here dark pool very very much used by shorts and large institutions so especially after hours you see a lot of them so 15.6 9.5 a lot of big ones here and speaking on shorts they did increase about 370,000 shares 18.86 percent of the free float is being shorted which does work out to be 172.31 million shares overall are being shorted and cost of our average is 1.34%. But aside from that though, in my video yesterday, someone did say, I guess, based on a investor place article, is said the true short interest on SoFi is around 24%. I have been unable to really find that. I really like to use Ortex. It's I find it's the most accurate in my opinion, but uh, who knows, it might be 24%, that'd be crazy stuff. So that is a lot higher than even pre-SPAC levels. So that would be all time highs for SoFi. So if short interest is 24%, I don't know, it'd be very interesting on why because yeah there's some fears in the mar broader market but there's at the same time even jim kramer recently just came out so that might be inverse kramer but kramer did come out saying that sofi it's kind of unjustified that it went down as much as it did so i don't know um moving on though as far as some latest updates sofi did put out some news first thing and so i see this as kind of good so galileo expands buy now pay later solution to include post purchase options for credit and debt and so this is once again a growing part of the business because more and more people are struggling unfortunately and reliant on this type of offering so i think this is good even does say right down here buy now pay later is forecasted to surpass 900 million users by 2027 presenting a tremendous market opportunity for banks and fintechs so so far participating in this is good stuff is this a reason to buy so far based off of this news i would say not so much so it's still good information regardless though um aside from that midway throughout the day there was a form 144 that was submitted that did indicate right here jeremy who is a officer is intending on selling 56 thousand shares and it looks like it was just associated to restricted stock so whatever it is it is what it is nothing really crazy associated to that i'm sure a lot of people will try Tried to blow this out of proportion but whatever it is like i said nothing really crazy aside from that looking at options today 4.78 million dollars in calls being purchased versus 2.33 million inputs sentiment wise 47 percent of all the options being done today are optimistic and looking at some of the call options that were purchased there's a consensus for it to be above 750 versus the puts you do see it sub 650 so it's kind of halfway through so the whole optimism that was very apparent from Friday and yesterday is starting to diminish, but I do really feel that has to do with tomorrow. So last minute jitters tomorrow, like I said, is going to be a very big day and will cause a lot of volatility within the broader market. So of course, just be kind of prepared for that. But as far as some support and resistance points, just to take note of going into tomorrow with it closing at $6 and 92 cents, it was right above this S one. So $6 and 90 cents is a strong support so just watch for that to hold going into tomorrow but aside from that seven dollars and 29 cents will be that next strong resistance point so just kind of take note of that regardless you do see on the fib levels very wide gaps here so that does mean that there's going to be a lot of volatility in the foreseeable future so if this six dollars and 90 cent doesn't hold then 665 then 625 and then vice versa above 729 769 and all the other fun jazz on the actual charts Still lower percentile of the boiling band you can see that starting today there is a bearish deviation so red line above the white so in theory uh, like i said i think that has to do 
with just a sell-off and just the last minute jitters um, overall but in theory it is considered somewhat neutral at 43 so it's not really considered oversold anymore and vice versa it's not overbought so the technicals are kind of just stuck in limbo waiting for some external factor choose to drive it either higher or lower, whether coming from SoFi specific or just the broader market. Aside from that though, you do see number of retail investors have been getting out. So again, maybe profit taking or things along those lines. So let me know your thoughts on SoFi. Have you been buying? Have you been selling? Have you been doing options? Surprisingly, I didn't actually do any weekly options uh, starting today. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of just, it is what it is. I'm just waiting for the meeting tomorrow just to see exactly what is said, because whatever is said is going to dictate what happens in the broader market, most likely for the next couple of weeks. So tomorrow is going to be a big day. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate that. And with that, appreciate all of you watching.